how to watch blackout sporting events like the World Cup. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for tea time. Today we have a little bit of fireside smokiness, guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're gonna be talking about blackout sports or sporting events or regionally locked out events. How do you watch them? Or how do you watch an event that's local to you while you're abroad, maybe on business? And I think it's a very interesting subject. People have been asking me about this for about uh, two or three weeks now. I said, you know what? I'm going to make a video about it. And the reason being is because people are talking about the World Cup. And some people are not able to watch the World Cup. Now, we know that Argentina is going to be playing Croatia in just a few hours. And I will be watching. And a lot of you will be watching also in the U.S. through either a Fox affiliate or maybe Telemundo or something. Some type of streaming service. Usually those streaming services are paid for by paid ads. That's how they work. All right. If it's not a pay per view type of thing, you're paying for it by watching advertisements. So either which way we can watch the World Cup, but some folks can't. So if you don't know, a lot of sporting events, games, popular events are geo locked. Right. And these geo locks or blackout restrictions cover what country or what state or what region or who and who cannot watch. That's basically how it works. Now, like I said, if you're in the U.S., you can go through Telemundo or one of the Fox affiliates and watch the game. Watch a World Cup, for example, or an NFL game or whatnot. No problem. Well, what happens if you are located in Iran, for example? We have a really great guy who's one of the moderators of our Discord server. If you haven't went to our Discord server and signed up yet, you should. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, like-minded people over there. I'll put a link down below to get to our Discord server. It's free. It's a lot of fun. Go and check that out. Anyways, he's a moderator. He's even been on this show before, and he's out of Iran. He can't watch the World Cup from where he is. It is geo-locked, right? And in his country, a lot of stuff is locked because of the censorship that happens in Iran. Now that's an extreme circumstance, being in a country where you cannot access data outside of the country or very minimal data, for example. Well, how about if I was a business person and I have to go to Mexico, for example, and travel on business for the next two weeks, but I still wanna watch the World Cup out of my local affiliate here in South Florida. Well, I can do that. And how we do it is through a VPN or a virtual private network. Now, if you don't know, a VPN or a virtual private network routes your internet connection through servers that are in another location, somewhere else, maybe around the world. For example, right now I've been using Pure VPN and it's been working out fantastic. And they have about 6,500 servers or something. It's a whole hell of a lot. And I can just pick any one of them to be located or have my internet route through, which is really powerful. So by connecting to a VPN server outside of a blackout region, for example, you can unlock region lock streams and maybe even watch like, for example, ESPN plus, but from abroad, this is what is so powerful. So while using a VPN, yes, gives you the ability to be more anonymous. It gives you like 256 bit military encryption. So you have that added security for your business or family, but also it allows you to watch geo locked content and bypass the blackout restrictions and circumvent maybe countrywide blocking or censorship that's going on. So there's a lot of things that you can do with a VPN besides just simply getting that added security, which most people think about when they hear VPN. So this is a really powerful thing. Matter of fact, I should show you guys, um, you could use the VPN through your phone. You can use it through your iPad. You can use it on your computer. You can actually install the VPN on a router. 
You could also use a VPN on a television. There's all kinds of things that you can do. Matter of fact, I had a question about that. And you know what? Let me ask you guys this. I had a couple of people ask me, how do you install a VPN on a router? And if you're one of those people and you're interested in that, down below, add that to the comment. Let me know if that is of interest to you. I also got some questions about how do I use a static IP address that is given to me by PureVPN, for example, and use port forwarding? That was another question. If you're interested in that, put that down below. I had a few more people ask me, how do I install a VPN on a television instead of having it throughout the entire house. I just want the one television to use that VPN so now I can access content that I normally wouldn't have access to. You know what I mean? So if you're interested in that, also put that into the comments and I will add to this, almost make like a series out of this. I do believe it to be very powerful when you can freely exchange thought when you can watch things that are maybe not specifically intended for you, if you know what I'm saying, just to be able to bypass some of that censorship that we're seeing worldwide at this point. It's not country to country to country. Some countries are worse, like in Iran, where it's like almost completely locked down. Whereas in our country, we are not locked down. <laughs> yeah. Um, so to speak, maybe, or, or maybe not so blatantly, but we do know that even when you do searches for certain things here in the United States, the major browsers are going to direct you bringing up the stuff that they want you to see on page one, two, and three. Whereas what maybe is more important to you to see is on page 150 on the search. You see what I'm saying? By burying it. So that's a possibility. Also using one of these VPNs are really powerful. Let's say if you wanna use a Tor network and you don't want people to know that you're on the Tor network, you just go through a VPN and you're anonymous, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do with this. Now, before I show you how simple this is on the phone, I wanna say that we had someone that is living down here in South Florida, right in. And he was saying how he used to live in France. And now the World Cup is obviously going to be played the semifinals between Morocco and France. And he wants to, instead of watching that game from here, a Fox affiliate in the US, he wants to watch that game from France. And once again, it is so, so easy to do. And if you're watching right now, I'm going to use you as an example. So let's say I wanna watch Morocco versus France. And I want to listen to the commentary in French. So what I want to do is I want to log into a local affiliate in France, right? And watch from there so that I have the French commentary instead of hearing the English commentary, right? I'm going to use you as an example. Super, super simple. So you're going to log into your phone. Matter of fact, maybe I'll pop it up on the screen somewhere around here. So that's all we have to do is click Pure VPN. All right, and it brings it up here. And as you can see at the bottom, it says Atlanta, Georgia or Atlanta, US. Why does it say that? Well, because I'm going through Starlink and Starlink is using a pop or a point of presence for me that's in Atlanta, Georgia. So my computer has an IP address that is registered to a server that's in Atlanta, Georgia. So if I look at weather, for example, on my computer, it's like, hey, this is the weather in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm like, I'm not in Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> but it thinks that I am. So I have to change my zip code. That's just how it works. So what PureVPN is saying is we recommend you using a server in Atlanta, Georgia. Why is so that we have a quicker milliseconds or a lower latency. So we're really close. And this is why, because it's thinking that I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, even though I'm not. Now, that's all we have to do is at the top, we just click the very top and now it gives us options. So that's all we have to do is simply click France. And there we go. It literally connected in, I don't know, two seconds or so. And now, as you can see, we have an IP address that's in France. Now, of course, as soon as we log into another server, we're gonna have a new IP address. But since we have an IP address in France, Anything that I do on this phone now, all right, is being done through a server in France and that website that's, for example, that I log into in France thinks that I'm actually there also. So that circumvents that restriction 
or that geo lock or that blackout regional stuff that goes on or any other type of countrywide block. Because now it believes that I'm in France. I am not accessing a French news network, an affiliate, let's say, in France, but from another country. It thinks that I'm actually in France. So coming back full circle, like I was saying before, is let's say if I was leaving the country to Mexico and I want to watch through my local Fox affiliate here, instead of being connected to France, I would just click on the button and say, oh, Miami sounds good. And now we say yes, and there you go. So it takes maybe about maybe five, six seconds and we're connected. Now, one other question that I got from a few different people was I have a bank and the bank authenticates me through my IP address. And when my IP address changes, it doesn't authenticate anymore. And then I have to go through this whole big process to once again, authenticate. A lot of businesses work like that, whereas they authenticate you from a single IP address and that is it. It kind of locks you in that way, all right? Well, people like me that use Starlink and other CGNAT type of ISPs, they don't have a static IP address available to them. They're in a pool of IP addresses and they're constantly changing, right? Well, with Pure VPN, they can give you or you can get a static IP address, which is really great. You can also do port forwarding. So the question was, well, I'm abroad doing business. How do I log into my bank account? All right. So number one, you would go through the VPN and log into, let's say, a Miami server. Let's say your bank is here in South Florida. So it knows that you're in this region. And then in Pure VPN setup, you would set it up for a specific static IP address. And before you leave, you would authenticate that IP address with your bank. So now your phone, doesn't matter if it's here in South Florida, if it's in Mexico, if it's in France, it doesn't make a difference where this phone is. For example, it could be a computer, a laptop, an iPad, whatever. That specific device authenticates through the static IP address. And now you can do your banking without having to go through any type of hoops. So once again, there is so many different things that you can do with a VPN besides just cloaking yourself and being more anonymous and the military encryption and all the rest of the stuff that comes to mind when you think about a virtual private network. There is a lot more. So if you want me to do a series about this and talk more about this, or if you have questions like the questions that I just gave out to you or any additional questions down in the comment area, let me know what they are. And if I can dig in a little bit deeper, I'll do it because I know there's a lot of you that are very interested in it. And I find it fascinating because I love the idea of having the ability to have everything available to you, not just information that the big entities say that you should have access to. I think everyone should have access to everything. All right. That's my personal opinion. And that goes to just my openness or I like open source things. I personally like Linux. I like stuff that you have control over and that you're not being limited by. No one needs to tell you what you can see and not see. It should be up to you to decide, right? I think you have enough sense. You don't need to look at stuff that you shouldn't be looking at or you don't feel comfortable looking at. But if you want to, you should be able to do it. Or if you want to read something that is maybe not, let's say, worthy of the upper echelons of you reading, you should be able to read it and then make a decision for yourself. Or, for example, our friend in Iran, if he just wants to get out of the country at all, if he doesn't go through a VPN, he can't. So... There's a lot of useful things that you can do with them. What was really nice is after doing a review on a whole bunch of different VPNs, I ended up going with Pure VPN because it was just right for me. It just did a lot and it just was a really good value at probably the cost of like a latte per month. I ended up getting the VPN, but also an IP address, a static IP address of my own, as well as port forwarding all included. I mean, you just couldn't beat it. And they reached out to me and gave me a link. 
And this link will give you a major discount. Once again, literally the cost of like a latte per month. Really, really cheap. It also gives me a couple of pennies, I don't know, for every time someone uses it. So I thank you for that. That's really great. But for the most part, using them has just been really good. And that's why I've been recommending them. So down below in the description, as well as the pinned comment, you'll find a link. If you click on that, you will get a major discount. Go check it out. Once again, it is super cheap. And if you want me to do more content about this and how to set it up, how to set it up on your TV, how to set it up on your router, how to set it up on your computer, what to do, what not to do, all the different things that you can do, <laughs> whatever the case might be, let me know in the comments below this video. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please throw this video a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. And subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.